Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 11, and this is what it says. Now it came about that while the multitude were pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. He sat down... And began teaching the multitude from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but at your bidding I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break. And they signaled to their partner, partners in the other boat, for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, it's more important than we know. May the strength, the power of it, will you begin to, to open up our hearts that we begin to know. in Christ's name we pray. Amen. A lot of years ago, my son and I were going motorcycle riding at a, an off-road motorcycle park. We, it was a great place. Over a thousand acres, 150 miles of, of trails through the woods, six motocross tracks. We pulled up and began to unload our bikes. And while we were unloading our bikes, I, I looked over and saw in the park and place next to me there were a couple of fellows working on a bike that was just like my son's and while we were unloading I thought I'd, I'd hopefully say a helpful word on you know what was helpful for me in getting my son's bike started and and so I said they looked over at me and then they went back to working on the bike we unloaded and it wasn't until later on that day I discovered that one of those two men was the chief mechanic for Honda Racing and their Baja 1000 racing team and, and the thought of me giving mechanical advice to the chief mechanic of Honda Racing, um, uh, it's sort of as comical as me giving coaching advice to Kirby Smart. <laughs> I, I realize people do it all the time, but it's ridiculous. It's, it's sort of like me giving pitching advice to John Smoltz. It's sort of like Jesus giving fishing advice to Peter. Jesus was from Nazareth. 
It was the closest body of water was at least 15 miles away. The possibility that Jesus had eaten fish before, that was a possibility. That he had been fishing before. Carpenters weren't known for their fishing ability. Still aren't. And now it's a carpenter turned preacher rabbi. And he's giving fishing advice to a professional fisherman. One who spent almost every day fishing. Who he'd learned from his father, probably. Who had learned from his father. Who had learned from his father. And he turns to him and gives him a fishing lesson. Cast your nets on the other side of the boat. Now, the astonishing thing is that Peter does it. <laughs> it, it you, can, you can almost hear the whine in his voice that he, he explains to him what the routine is. You know, we, we've been fishing all night. Any fisherman knows that that's when the fish stand the greatest possibility of being caught. They come to the surface in the cool of the night and, and you let down your nets. Then, when the sun comes out, they go hiding in the, the dark places, in the bottoms, and you never catch them. But he relents. Peter says, but if you insist. And here, it's easy to imagine Peter making the most half-hearted cast that he's ever made in his life. He knows he's not going to catch anything. He's done it thousands of times before, but he, he lets out his nets, nets. And then he begins to pull them in like he had done thousands of times before. The only thing that's a little different is he's preparing his I told you so while he's pulling in his net. And as he begin to, begins to pull in his net, he begins to feel something that, well, he hadn't felt all night. There's something in the net. And as he begins to pull, he feels something that he's never felt before in his life. A quantity of fish that he's never, never seen, never heard of. So he calls for others to come over and, and help him pull in. And there's so many fish that they begin to, to swamp the boats. And the boats begin to sink. And they're laughing, they're back slapping, they're high-fiving. And then Peter says, Depart. Well, you know, depart doesn't sound anything like thank you. It doesn't sound like, wow, this is astonishing. Wow, we won't have to go fishing for a while. Thank you for helping my family. It doesn't sound like any of those things. It sounds a lot like go away. Shoo. Peter says, depart. Because Peter knows something that the reader doesn't know. He knows that this is not about fishing. It's not about fishing. That most often, we don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. We may think we're putting children to bed, but really what we're doing is Entering some of the most sacred time in all of life. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. We may think that we're taking a, a meal to a neighbor. When what we're really doing is, is offering that bit of hope. That their life is depending on. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. We may think, well, we're just attending another worship service. It's a routine. It's a routine. When really what we're doing is, is preparing our eyes and ears to, to see and to hear the voice of God all around us. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. And Peter knows for certain that this is not about fishing. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. It's not about the fishing. It's not about fishing. What it is about is obeying God in the small things. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. 
Jesus said to Peter, you are, Peter, the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. He told Peter that he was the rock on which he was going to build the church. Well, those weren't Jesus' first words to him. Jesus' first words to him are, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. Well, it makes you wonder, makes you wonder if, if Peter hadn't obeyed those first words, would he have ever heard those latter words? I think not. I think not. That when we obey God in the small things, then he begins to tell us greater and greater and greater things. A lot of years ago, my brother entered the workforce. He went to work for a Fortune 500 company. It was very much an entry-level position. And after about a year or two, they offered him uh, another position that was just a little higher up. And the whole family celebrated with him. He was a, a junior buyer. He, he was as low as you could get on the totem pole of the buyers. This Fortune 500 company, they had a lot of needs, things that they, they needed to purchase. And, and he was one of those that would purchase some of the things that this Fortune 500 company would need. Well, the whole family was celebrating with him. And I remember when we were going out to eat, my father told him, he said, you're going to be buying for your company. He said, people selling those things, they're going to want to give you little things. Don't accept a turkey at Christmas. Don't accept tickets to a little league game. Don't accept a pen and pencil set. Because once you accept the little things, my father said, it'll be easier to accept the bigger things. And then one day they're going to ask you for a special favor that will help you and help their country, company, but will not help your company. Don't accept the little things. Fast forward several years. My brother was still a junior buyer, but the company did an, an audit. And in that audit, they discovered that there were several folks, several folks in that company that were doing special favors for the people selling goods to that company. And the special favors helped the sellers, helped the buyers, but hurt the company. And so the Fortune 500 company let them go. My brother said, you know, I didn't listen to dad often, but I, I'm glad I listened to him on that one. That it's the little things, it's the little things that, that open our hearts and open our, our ears to obey in the larger things. The way that Jesus put it, he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Is there anything smaller than a yes? Is there anything smaller than a no? Often we don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. Often we don't know that we're setting the future with the word yes. We're setting the future with the word no. No. It's Peter, Peter, who understands that this is not about fishing, that it's about obeying God in the small things. And now you and I know it too. Obeying God in the small things. And then we'll, we'll be able to hear the larger ones. It's not about fishing. It's about obeying God in the small things. And not only that, it's also about leaving room in the routine. When, uh, soon after I graduated from seminary, I realized that there is a great big difference between preaching every once in a while and preaching every Sunday. That Sunday comes around just about every week. And, and, and having something to say week in and week out, well, that's... That's way more than any of us can do. Well, there were a group of us that got together and we said, where can we get help? Well, we all had mutual admiration for a preaching professor that we had. So we asked, we went to the top. We asked Dr. Craddock if, if he would help us in preaching. And once a month for, for two years, he would meet with a, a small group of us and, and we'd have 
two sermons that were recorded, that were prepared for us to, to listen to and, and to go over together. That was about four o'clock in the afternoon, and then when supper time came, usually we'd order a pizza or something like that, and we'd sit around and eat together. Most of the time, we'd just listen to Dr. Craddock's stories. <laughs> well, one day he told a story about going to get peanut butter at a grocery store. He said usually grocery shopping was what his wife did, and he felt like an alien in a foreign land. So he stopped to ask someone who might know something about peanut butter. He asked this woman, he said, do you know where the peanut butter is? She looked at him and she said, yeah, right. And she turned and walked away. Oh, he thought, you know, peanut butter must be a state secret or something very special in that particular supermarket. So he went looking for himself and finally found it. He got there on the aisle and he reached down to get the peanut butter. And that's when that woman came around the, the aisle and she said, oh, you really did want peanut butter. <laughs> he said, well, that's what I said. Where do you know where the peanut butter is? She said, oh, I thought you were just trying to come on to me. You know, you never can be too careful. <laughs> to which Dr. Craddock said, yes, you can. You really can be too careful. Oh, we spend so much of our life being careful to control. Careful to manage, careful to perfect our routine and our lives. But we don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. And if there's, there's, there's no room in the routine, very often what we exclude is Jesus. Peter was about the routine of cleaning his nets. That's what you did every morning. And he was doing his morning routine, cleaning his nets. And that's when Jesus came to him. And he left room in the routine for Jesus. It was Jesus who was on his way to Jerusalem that came upon ten leprous men. And it was on his way that he healed them. Jesus was on his way to the synagogue official's house when a woman saw him and, and touched the fringe of his garment and she was healed while he was on his way. That it was Jesus on his way to Jerusalem came across blind, blind Bartimaeus. And it was there that Bartimaeus received his sight. Room in the routine. We don't know what we're doing when we're doing it. We may think we're putting a child to bed when we're really, we're entering into one of the most sacred times in all of life. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. We may think that they were delivering a meal to, to a neighbor when what we're offering is hope. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. That we may think we're about the routine of worship. When really what we're doing is preparing for eternity. With eyes that see not just with sight but with insight. With ears that hear not just the sounds audible. but the voice of Jesus that speaks to our hearts. This story, it's not about fishing. It's about leaving room in the routine. It's about obeying God in the small things. But that's not the end of the story. Peter and, and, and the other fishermen didn't just pull in this haul of fish and... and then go home and healthy, wealthy, and wise, and all was right with the world. No. Peter turned to Jesus and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Sinful, full of sin, not just a little sin, not just there are one or two things I've done wrong in my life. Nope. F full of sin. But Jesus pays no attention to that, and he calls him to follow him. To follow him. That's the end of the story where, where Peter follows Jesus. 
The last thing that I want to talk about this morning is know that sin doesn't disqualify you. Murder didn't disqualify Moses. Lying didn't disqualify Jacob. Adultery didn't disqualify David. Being an accessory to murder didn't disqualify Paul. And being sinful didn't disqualify Peter. That it's sin. Sin is why Jesus came to take your sin and mine on himself. To nail it to the cross. To kill it. To take away its power. To take away the fear. To take away the shame. To take away the sin. To take away the guilt. And he rose again to live his life through us. That we might have power. Not just to continue in the sin. But power over it. The power of his spirit. To follow and step by step by step in following Jesus. We step away from the sin. We don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. And following Jesus begins a, a step, a step at a time. And your sin doesn't disqualify you. This morning, there may, may be some folks that are, that are listening. And there's something in your past, something you did or something that was done to you. And, and it's not only left a, a pall, a, a, a darkness, a fear over all your past, a dreariness, but it's left it over your present. And it's affecting your future. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me, for our forgiveness. And there's nothing that you've done that has put too, you too far from his reach, too far from his forgiveness. I want to invite you to pray with me right now this morning. Join with me. Let's pray. Jesus, your call to follow, it's not just for some, it's for all. And sin doesn't disqualify us. It didn't disqualify Peter. It didn't disqualify Paul and it doesn't disqualify us. May we know your power. The power of your Holy Spirit to forgive and to grant us the grace and the power enough to follow you now, right now, today. Jesus, we need your strength. If we're going to see you in the, the routine, if we're going to hear your voice in the routine in the everyday, because we have a tendency to, well, to want to control and manage and perfect and and to be too careful in this life in thinking that we're in control of our lives and so we, we manage and control and perfect. And we don't leave room in our routine. Grant us the power of your Holy Spirit that we're able to see and hear. Not with our own eyes and our own ears but with the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, it may be that there's some folks this morning that haven't been obeying you in the little things, in the small things, that they, they haven't let their yes be yes and their no be no. And right now, we turn those things over to you, that you give us the strength we don't have. confess to repent and to turn toward you not just in the big things but in the small things that we might follow you not one day but this day it's in Christ's name we pray Amen thanks again for joining us today 
Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.